Well, howdy folks, welcome back to my channel. Got another fun video for you today. And if you're a subscriber, you probably saw a video last week that I titled uh, Building Your Own DIY Spring Reverb Part 1. And today is part two to that video. So I will go ahead and link that first video in the description. If you have not yet watched it, and if you come across this one first, please go back and watch that one because it's going to answer a lot of the questions that you're gonna have about how I did this. But let's get into the design changes that I made and we'll start with the aesthetic. So as you can see, it now has a little title. It's the Box of Verb. And for starters, I stained this box. Here is the original color. So you can see it was a really light wood. And again, this was a wine box that I got a bottle of wine in that I just held on to because I thought I could make something out of it. So stained it and burned Box of Verb into the front here. And by the way, I did that kind of jiggly thing on purpose. I was trying to make it verby, but I think I might've went a little too far. Probably should have kept them a little bit closer together. But anyway, um, so there's that. And then you'll also notice that on the end here, I labeled the input jack with an I and the volume pot with a V. And now on the other side, oh, you notice there's two pots here now, wet and dry, and then also our output jack. So I did modify the design slightly, and I'd like to get into that real quick. Let me just show you the inside. No major changes there as far as the way it's laid out. Pretty much the same, but I did uh, make a small design change and it helped a lot. Now, if you watch that video, you remember what I was trying to do is not have a 100% fully wet reverb signal like a typical reverb tank. What I wanted to do was have a way to blend the dry signal back in. And I tried to use a blend pot and it just didn't work how I wanted it to work. So I had said in that video that I might go back and find a crossfader circuit. Well, I found a couple of them, but the thing is with a passive crossfader, it really kills your volume. It really drops the volume down. And um, you could do an active crossfader that I'd have to, you know, wire something into there and figure that out. And I found a couple active crossfader circuits, um, you know, schematics online, but the, most of them were for um, positive and negative power. So then I would need to add an inverter. And I just started to go, ah, this seems like a lot of work. And then it just hit me. I'm like, wait a minute, idiot. Why don't you just do a basic passive mixer? Now, if you've never done that before, if you take a potentiometer and a resistor, and you know, if you want a two channel, you use two. If you want a three channel, you use three, four, whatever. And you put them all to a jack. That's a, basically a very simple passive mixer. And so that's exactly what I did. So what we have here is one for the fully wet control. And so this is just the volume of the fully wet and this is the volume of the fully dry. And then that way you can just kind of mix them to your heart's content to get just the right level of wet dry. And guess what? It works. Okay, so here is my updated diagram and I will go ahead and put that on the screen for you as I walk through the changes. Now the left side of the diagram is exactly the same as it was before. We've got the RTEC amp board, the battery, the LED, the input jack, surface transducer, the echo mic spring, and um, the piezo disc. No changes there. All that is exactly the same. When we get to the other side of the piezo disc, I took the negative from the input jack, which is the copy of the input jack, of course, the clean signal, and then the negative from the piezo disc, hooked those together along with grounding on both of the pots, and then that same ground went over to the input jack. That way the entire circuit is completely grounded. Um, then the positive coming out of both from the input jack and also from the piezo disc, each went into their own 100K audio taper pots. Um, so those are what we have for the pots. And then the outputs from both of those go right into the input jack. And because, as I mentioned, with a mix, with a passive mixer, you want a resistor there. So I put a 10K resistor on each one at the actual audio jack. So what happens then that prevents it from going back the other way and uh, you know causing any damage to the other components. Now, a couple other very minor things that I did here that I just want to share with you, and this did make a difference. So if you remember last time, if you watched the last one and you, and you heard the sound clips, it was a very soft spring and it was cool. It was a very like gentle spring. And I found out that if I would stretch this spring just a little bit farther, I'd get a little more metallic sort of sound out of it. So that's what I did. So you remember last time I said I went about five and a quarter inches from here to here. Well, this time I've got about six and a quarter inches. So I stretched the string about another inch um, just to give a little more tension into that spring. Um, if you remember last time, I used a piece of dental floss here to hook this piezo to the little um, eyelet there. And um, I noticed that that dental floss again gave it a very gentle, you know, it, it allowed it to, you know, it took some of the vibrations out. 
So I went back and I used a piece of metal wire here because I was like, I want it to be a little more aggressive. So I used a piece of metal wire and I could notice a difference immediately. It was way harsher with that metal wire. So then I went back and I wrapped the metal wire in tape. And then I think I got a pretty good um, middle ground there. Now you probably could go back and play with different materials there. Maybe if you use an insulated wire instead of a just a you know open metal wire, that might work a little better. Um, but in any case, uh, what I got now, I am very happy with. Okay, so one other thing that I forgot to mention in the last video is that it would feed back really easily if you're using an amp, if you had it near the amp. So if you remember last time I had the amp down on the floor, I had the, the spring reverb up over here to keep them separated. If I put it near the amp, you would get feedback very easily because the audio coming out of the amp tries to go back into that spring, right? And you can get a very easy feedback loop. So one other mod that I might use, I might go back there and add some sound deadening in here to help with that. Um, but uh, that was one other thing that I noticed. And, and now another thing with this, you just kind of have to play around with it to get the sweet spot between how much volume you want on this side of the spring and then what your wet dry mix is. Um, but I've been able to get some pretty good tones out of this. So what I'm going to do for the rest of this video is I'm just going to plug this direct into the audio interface so you can hear exactly what's coming out of this. I'm going to try a few different instruments, let you hear what this thing can do. And uh, thank you for tuning in. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. The wise man at their end, no dark is right. Because their words had forked no lightning, they do not go gentle into that good night. Radio City, this is the National Broadcasting Company. Radio City, this is the National Broadcasting Company.